At the age of 22, uh, my mother and I decided that um, I was going to take care of my younger sister, who was 14 at the time. My mother was getting deployed to Japan, and I had to become her legal guardian. And I didn't really think about myself. I didn't think about what it was that I needed to do for my life. I just thought about my sister. I poured everything I had into her. I raised her the same way that my mother uh, would have raised me. So I attended all the practices. I would go to the school. I would be there for her whenever she needed me. And so from 22 to 27, I was a full-time parent. Now, it gets a little tricky when I get to 27. My sister graduates. She goes off to college. She's in New York, graduated top 10% of her class. Yay, hooray, yes, yay, right? And I, I was so proud, but it didn't hit me. And I tell people all the time, it's very interesting to go through MS syndrome at 27 years old. <laughs> that first Monday, I remember it vividly because it was like a turning point for me in my life. I came home, it was a Monday, had worked all day, got home, sat on the couch, and all I could hear was tick, tick, tick. And I'm doing it this way because I'm left-handed, so I have to do it this way, right? But it was tick, tick, tick. I was just sitting there. I had no one to cook for. I had no practice to go to. I didn't have, uh, you know, someone asking me what we're doing tonight. I had no, I didn't even have my buddy to go to the movies with anymore. Um, and I sat there and I said, you know what? I have to get back to what I think is my life's purpose, what my mother raised me uh, to do, uh, what I felt like I was put here on this planet to do. And that was to be involved in politics, to be, uh, to help shape policy, to help get people elected, to help put people in positions of power to even run uh, the candidates that we see every day. I knew that I wanted to do something that would help people in my, in the way that I thought I could do, the way I thought I could help people. And so in 2016, a young attorney who was running to become judge uh, the Honorable Florence Taylor Barner, who was successful in 2016 to become Broward County's first Haitian American elected judge without being appointed first. You see, here in Broward County, we have 90 plus judges, but only eight or seven at this time are of African American or Caribbean descent in a minority majority county. And so then I continued to travel. I, I wanted to see how deep this political rabbit hole went. I wanted to learn everything. I wanted to know the ins and outs. And so I began to travel. I went, to, I went all over the state. I went to different meetings, political events. I, I saw different candidates speak. I would go everywhere I could to try to meet and learn about this political system. I had no idea about it. But then I started meeting candidates. I started building relationships. I started meeting elected officials, people from the House of Representatives all the way down to your mayors and your city commissioners. I know a great deal of them here in the state of Florida, and I made it my mission to meet them. I wanted to learn what made them want to become an elected official, what made them want to pursue public office, and how did they get elected? How were they successful? Because I know a lot of people are well-intentioned and they want to run for office, but I wanted to know what made them successful. I spoke to the people that won, and I spoke to the people that lost. That's just as important. I wanted to know how do we get this thing turning, because we need to get younger people, we need to get millennials in action and in the right positions, and we need to learn how this thing works so that we can start building our political power. But I didn't count on the 2016 election being the ugliest presidential election we've ever seen in our life, and I hope that we never have to go through something like that again. I, I pray we never have to go through something like that again. But that taught me something. That taught me something, and so through my various travels, I came up with these, these mantras, these tips, these tricks, these, these tools, these things that I thought made candidates be successful. And this is not the end all to be all. This can't, this, may not work for everybody, but I think it's a pretty general blueprint. It's a general blueprint. So if someone were to come to me today and say, I am so-and-so and I am running for public office, I'm going to step back and look at you and say, are you really running for office? Or are you just taking pictures and putting them up on social media? So rule number one, there are no rules. There are no rules. Like I said before, we went through the 2016 presidential election, and that completely broke the system, damaged it. There is no wait my turn. There is no you're in line. There is no you have to wait for someone to anoint you to be next. 
There's none of that. There are no rules. If this certain person or this certain organization won't endorse you, oh well. You don't have to play by their rules. You're there for the people. You decided that you wanted to run for office, that you wanted to step up and be the voice for the voiceless, that you wanted to be someone to do the most good in your community, in your city, in your district, or in your state. And just like this image up here, when the young man told Neo in one of my favorite movies, The Matrix, there are no spoons. Yeah, you're right, there are no spoons. It's a mindset. It's a mindset, there are no rules. You wait for no one. What is, wait my turn? You know, I had a friend running for office, told this older gentleman uh, that he was running for office. He was running against a particular incumbent. That man looked at him and said, haven't you ever heard, wait your turn? I said, what did you do? He was like, well, I just said, you know, thank you, sir, but you know, I'm running for X, Y, and Z. I said, you better than me. I would have laughed and walked away. I wouldn't have said anything else. I would have just walked off. But there is no more wait your turn. Too often we have seen elected officials who say they represent us, but we still, we still don't have access to affordable health care, affordable housing, or affordable education. There are still people that in the summer here in South Florida have to open up the front door and the back door to get a breeze in through the summer. We have to do better. So if you say, okay, I want to run for office. I want to do the most good. I want to be the best that I can be for everyone around me. You're going to have to put in the work. And I'm not talking about, like I said, you know, you just happen to get a t-shirt made and, and that's great, that's awesome, and then you want to go out and happen to go to a store and, oh, I'm running for office, let me take a picture at my favorite bagel shop. Click. No, you got to put in work. I'm talking work, 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 right? You see me, I'll be work, work, work. right? You got to work. You got to put feet to pavement, knuckles to doors. You've got to raise money. You've got to make phone calls. You have to go to this event. You're going to have people telling you what you should and should not be doing. You're going to have all these voices in your head. You're going to have family members wanting you to do stuff. You're going to have people thinking you're now the expert because you went to one political meeting. So you have to do the work. You have to show up. You have to follow up. And you have to make sure when you enter a room, they know you're there. And when you leave, they need to miss you. They need to know you left. Make an impact. Get out there and put in the work. So now you're saying, OK, OK, I, I'm not playing by any rules. I'm going to put in the work. I love Rihanna, of course. All right, so yeah, OK, great. All right, so next step. What are your genuine intentions? What are your genuine intentions? I know for, for me, for the millennial generation, we have an opportunity to right the ship. We have an opportunity to rebuild this structure, to rebuild our political system, because it's no longer about us. It's about those that are coming behind us, our children, our future. What do we want to leave for them now? We have to think about that now. And so anybody that tells me they're running for office, I need to know what your intentions are. Do you care? Do you care about the people in your community? Do you care that there are people that are hungry right down the street from probably your office building, where it would be if you're successful? Do you care? So if you say, OK, uh, I do care. No, I'm not asking you your elevator pitch. I'm not asking you to tell me what you think everybody wants to hear. I'm asking you to look in the mirror and ask yourself, do you care? Because you can lie to me, you cannot lie to yourself. So now, OK, you say, oh, I, I, I have genuine intentions. I want to do the most good. I'm going to put in the work. I'm not playing by any rules. I'm a rebel. That's why I'm doing this. OK, so you say you're running for office. Well, everybody needs a superhero. Everybody needs a superhero. If you're running for office, that means you are committed to, to fighting injustices, whenever, whatever they look like. And so I have this theory, and I talk with my friends all the time, and I say that we are superheroes. Everybody is a superhero. And when you're a superhero, that means you have a superpower. Think about it. There is something that you are naturally gifted at, that you and a whole group of friends, there is this one thing that only you are great at doing. That's your superpower, right? We all have it. Our elected officials, some of the great ones, we see it, we can see it, right? Anybody ever heard of, um, what's this guy's name, uh, President Obama? <laughs> Anybody ever heard of him? 
Yeah? His superpower was on full display in, 2000, in 2004 when he addressed the nation. His, his, his gift with words, that is a superpower. And so I tell you, find your superpower. If you are running for office or you want to run for office, find your superpower and use it. You're using it for good. It's okay. Sometimes I know you think it's too easy or it's, something's not working right because you're, you're, it just feels too natural. No, that's you. That's your gift. That's your gift. But something else you have to do too, and this is something a lot of people run away from and it causes us to get in trouble. Because everybody knows, if, you, if all my comic book fans know that it's not just about the good, right? It's also about the bad. Right? There's always the struggle between the main character, the hero, about the dark and the light. So I say, you know what? Embrace the dark side. Right after you ask yourself, why are you running for office? Ask what your dark impulses are. Do you want power? You want to be wealthy? You want to be influential? You want the lights? You want the camera? You want everyone to know your name? You want the love? What's your dark side? because you have to know what those impulses are. Because if you are successful, the power will go to your head if you're not ready for it. So what is it that conflicts with your good side? We all have it, it's okay, right? Embrace the glorious mess that you are. We are all uniquely us, we are complex characters. And so you have to know both the good and the bad. So now you say, okay, I'm not playing by anyone's rules. I love Rihanna. I'm going to work, right? I have genuine intentions. And you know what? Yes, I am a superhero. So then you're helping us build our political power because we have none. And not to throw any kind of, of, of shade on the giants of the past, but we have to be our giants right now, and we have to rewrite our rules and rebuild our political power. We have to be financially literate because there are people out here suffering. And we can no longer afford to elect people who have no genuine intentions for us. And now I'm not saying that because you follow these little rules that you'll be successful and you'll win, but you know what? You'll put yourself in a really good place to be successful. And sometimes that's all you need. Every election is not the same. You could run against the same person 15 times. Each race will be different. But if you don't play by anyone's rules, you put in the work, you have genuine intentions, and you embrace your superpowers, your being a superhero, and you run for office, and you help build our political power. Somewhere on the street, if I happen to meet you, and you say, I am running for public office, I'm gonna step back and say, are you really running for office? Thank you.